Hey guys, how we doing? It's Wednesday. Um, coming at you today with the video on let's continue this reverse engineering project. And some of you have had some questions about what's going on and how to kind of progress through this. I'm going to show you a reverse engineering project that I did uh, because I like to make things real world. So first, let's go through the PowerPoint, and then I'll guide you through the actual reverse engineering of the project I used. All right, so PowerPoint, here we go. Okay, so product disassembly. So you're going to use the same product that you've used the whole time. So what is the disassembly? It's the breakdown or teardown of a product. This is one of the major pieces of reverse engineering to find out how something works or to find a way to make it better. So how do the parts interact? These are questions that you need to answer. What are the good or bad features of a product? For example, the form or the function. What caused the product to succeed or fail? Are the materials appropriate when manufacturing process was used? And what is the estimated cost of the product? Let's use an example of a car here. If I make the transmission out of plastic, the materials probably aren't appropriate. The cost would be very low, but I guarantee that the product would fail. So why do we disassemble a product? We need to find out how it interacts, the strength and weaknesses. We need to understand the operation. And then we need to develop documentation. Now, this is going to look different for everybody. Um, some of you have Inventor downloaded. If you do, you can create 3D models that way. Others of you are going to have to sketch this stuff out, and that's okay too. This is, this is where I'm giving you some leeway. A product is selected for reverse engineering. It can be something as simple as a child's toy to as complex as a fishing reel. Remember, 3 to 13 parts and no electronics. Those are the rules. Certain supplies for disassembly. You may need to actually cut something in half. So make sure that this isn't something that your parents are going to be mad about if you cut it in half. Sometimes it's as simple as taking something apart. Uh, one student contacted me and asked if it was okay if they modify a Nerf gun. That's absolutely acceptable and you can take the whole thing apart with a screwdriver. We're not going to worry about the automata blocks, automobile blocks vehicles, so that's irrelevant. So disassemble the product, then you're going to create a pictorial sketch to describe the operation. Then you're going to measure each part carefully. Obviously, you don't have dial calipers at home or micrometers, but hopefully you have a ruler or a tape measure, so we're going to have to use that to get our measurements. Just be as accurate as you can. You're going to record your findings on the product chart, which is the next slide, so I'll give you that in a second. Then you're going to create an annotated sketch of each part. You've done an annotated sketch before. That's where you sketch each part, and then you label it. And then compare the hypothesis for your operation to actual operation. Your hypothesis for your operation is the black box activity that we did in the last assignment. Then if you have the ability to create a 3D model using Inventor, please do so. Then you're going to document all your findings. So here's your disassembly chart. You give each part a part number, a name, how many of them are there, dimensions, its function, what materials it made out of, density. If you know how to find density or if you have a gram scale, you can probably figure this out. If not, that's okay. I understand that we're not at school and have the ability to do this. Then interaction of parts in general wear. How do the parts interact, the good and bad features of the product, what caused the product to succeed or fail, are the materials appropriate, manufacturing product. So here is a display. Now we're not going to do a display like this. I want you to create a PowerPoint of your product. So you, one of your slides is going to be an exploded view. And then you can go through each part and give me like the form, the function, things like that of each individual part. So this is a Zebco SpinCast 404SE uh, reel that somebody has taken apart. Here's a toy rocket launcher. 
same thing. Each individual part has its own slide. Here's a tape dispenser. This is one of the handheld ones that you would seal a box with. So that's what we're doing next. So here is my product, the Rogue Games Box. Now, I don't own one of these because it costs $135 for this particular plywood box, which seemed a little ridiculous. So by looking at all the pictures, I was able to get a rough idea of what it looks like. And then down here, I was able to get the three dimensions that I need. So I know that the box needed to be 20 inches by 24 by 30 when it's assembled. And I decided to use three quarter inch plywood. So three quarter inch plywood, pocket screws and fasteners. I have basically everything that I need to build this as far as information goes. So I went into Inventor and I designed the top. Then I designed an end and I designed a front. So if I have a top, I have a top and bottom, I have two ends and I have a front and back. And then here's the middle part. Then after I designed all the pieces in Inventor using actual dimensions, I went ahead and put it together in an assembly. So here's my assembly of the box showing all the different pieces, parts. Now, if you don't have Inventor at home, that's okay. You can hand sketch this stuff. Just do the best you can. Take your time. I'm giving you a considerable amount of time to do this assignment. From this, I created a presentation so that you can see how my box goes together. I can play my presentation here. There's my front. There's an end, there's the other end, there's the top, the bottom, you can see the middle. Now, this would be a bad presentation because you can't see this whole piece because it doesn't go out far enough along with this. I would just need to extend those out a little farther. And then last but not least, a dimension drawing. Now, from this, I actually built this box and it's sitting in my garage. I used the dimensions I made. So what I did is I reverse engineered this games box based off of a picture and dimensions I had. So I didn't even start with an actual physical object. So for this assignment, you you probably have the luxury of starting with an actual physical object, which makes this a lot easier to do. With mine, I just didn't want to pay $135 for something I was pretty confident I could make. So I made mine based off of a picture. And remember, if you look at all those pictures and you go to Rogue's website and look up the games box, it won't show you a picture of the middle. So I had to assume, black box it, what the middle looked like. For support. So what I want you to do is I want you to basically reverse engineer something that you have in your house. Remember, 3 to 13 parts, no electronics. Then I want you to go through the steps. This is, you should be using the same product for each one of Unit 6 assignments. Don't switch up products. So whatever you used for unit one, you picked five products, you looked at them, you reverse engineered them. Six, two, now you're looking at the structure, form, function, things like that. Six, three, same thing. Six, four, now we're disassembling it. Then we're gonna actually, for the final culminating project, is you're gonna find a way to make it better. Um, for the games box, it was just building it. Um, I reverse engineered it on paper, and then I actually built it. Um, you don't have to necessarily go to that extreme, but I want you to actually solve a problem you have. So you have a product at your home that you really don't, you know, I could make this better. We all have those things that we use on a daily basis. I know how to make this better. Well, this is your chance to actually make something better. That's what this whole class is about. IED is about finding a way to reverse engineer something. And we've went through all the pieces parts to lead up to this. So now it's time to make something in your life better. So that's what I have for your next assignment.
is product disassembly 6.4. Get to it and be great, guys. And I'll see you in a couple days.